I really don't want to elaborate on it, but the bottom line is, I'm sitting in the locker room, I see Brett, I see Vince and his clan and his crew, Brett mad as fuck, because they already fucked him off the belt. I'm thinking to myself, damn, some shit gonna go down. And you know, Jim Navel sitting over in the corner, he get to doing this shit, brother, his goddamn beard. He's either up to no goddamn good, or some shit is about to break out. All I know is, is Vince, look that fucking bread, talking shit, get the fuck out of my locker room, get out of my building, you're done, get out, da 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 da. And all I remember Brett was saying is, shut the fuck up, leave me the fuck alone. When I get done, I get dressed, I'll leave this motherfucker when I get good and ready. Vince says, you need to leave my building now. I remember Brett telling it over to him, look, I'm getting ready to take a shower. If you're standing there, when I get out the shower, I'm going to knock your ass out. Me, being the big smoker at P, I was already high by this time because I'm just done. I'm sitting back and I'm bugging to myself thinking, damn, shit's about to go down. Vince and his crew's over there. Got his son, Pat Patterson. You know what I mean? He got a... Um, the, the damn shooter from back in the day and shit. Uh, I can't even think of the Briscoes. We had a goddamn Briscoe. Briscoe, you know what I mean? I don't know if he a shooter or if he a hooker. Either way, that motherfucker hook you, you're a hook. All I got to know is Brett said that shit. He took his butt ass over there, went and watched the goddamn shower. He came out of that damn locker room with a towel wrapped around his ass. He looked over there and see Vince still standing over there. Shit, he walked right back across the locker room over there. Grabbed his jeans out that motherfucking locker. Didn't even get the water off his back good. Shit, goddamn shit. Didn't even put his drawers on. Jumped down. Airborne Ranger. Threw his jeans on. 501. But that motherfucker's about three bites. Two undone from the top. Didn't even put his shirt on. Stepped into his tennis shoes. Turned around, looked at Vince. Walked over there. Bam, bam. Hit him with a left. Hit him with a right. Bam. Dropped him like a sack of potatoes. I mean, he went down, he went over, got to put the boots to him, his son jumped on top of him, got to cover his ass up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, shit, that was that. The rest of this shit, I'm sure y'all can read in Brett's book. I saw Brett Hart and Shawn Michaels down on the floor in Hartford, Connecticut. They cannot deny this happened because it did happen. They were in the locker room down on the floor pulling at each other's hair and they had to be separated and it had nothing to do with professional wrestling. It had to do with a personal vendetta they had against each other. These were two guys who just could not coexist anymore in the same locker room. And, and it, it did finally culminated to, of course, the Montreal screw job, which, I mean, come on, give me a break. I can't lose the belt in Canada. Okay, well, we'll go across the border from uh, Windsor, from uh, Toronto, we'll do it in uh, Detroit. Well, I can't lose, it's too close to Canada. Oh, come on, give me a break. And uh, I think Dave Pinter went and asked Vader to do some interviews, and he said no. And then somebody else went and asked him, and he said no. And finally, somebody said, uh, or Kevin Sullivan said, Paul, we get, would you go ask Tim? Maybe he'll listen to you. If, please ask him to see if he'll come and do the interview, because it's like 6 o'clock. The people uh, are film people, the union, so they go on, uh, they go on a break lunch or whatever. So you know, we started about seven something, so we only had about 15 minutes, and it was a very important interview. And I just like I'm talking here to you and said, Leon, do you mind uh, doing this interview? And you know, he said some nasty words and. You know, it was kind of like this. What do you, what's your deal? And, you know, I ain't gonna let nobody talk to me that way. You know, and he, I mean, he, he was, he talked really, I, and I don't know why. That's the sad thing, I don't know why. And uh, one thing led to another. I mean, it got hotter and hotter and hotter. And then um, he sucker punched me. Cause, you know, I was with the office and if, if I would have ever thrown the first punch, I'd been fired. Right. <laughs> and that quick. And uh, and I got up and um, if the right one don't get you, the left one will. And uh, I mean, I defended myself and I don't know if you ever seen somebody knocked out on their feet. Have you ever seen one like, stumble around and finally go down? That's how he went. 
and I kicked him in the face about five, six times. And then uh, if I could have got a hold of a club or something else, I'm glad I didn't, but I would have killed him. Don't do that. That was wrong. He was wrong. And it cost him, cost him a lot of money. I could have sued him. And that's how it happened. Then we got into it again, and I took a couple shots. But I worked that night. He was the, he had to go to the hospital. What was the vibe in the locker room? They loved it. It kind of gave me a, it helped me. <laughs> it helped me to stay there another five years. <laughs> so it wasn't all bad. But it was one of those, I mean, you don't like to do that. But but then again, you don't, you know, here's a guy that ain't been in the business. And you don't talk to people that way. Not in front of everybody in the locker. You don't do it. So it was my pride, too. I mean, right. I'm glad he hit me. Back in uh, WCW, what was the um, your view of the whole Sid Vicious, Arn Anderson stabbing incident? Luckily, I wasn't there. I'd already got hurt. And, uh, that's primarily what I was around there for, just to keep that crap from happening. Uh, I could control, uh, fairly well control the whole group. And on the first English trip, that's what I did over there that time, was keep people separated and keep people uh, from short-circuiting. And... But did you see the tensions building before that happened? Arn is a needler, and Sid is a, a person that doesn't like being ribbed, and he does, doesn't really participate in a lot of them. All right. And he's just kind of a person that wants to be left alone, and Arn's a needler. Now, how it ever got to that point, I don't have a clue. What happened, uh, or what are your memories? What happened the night Ric Flair went after you backstage? <laughs> I was sitting in a room on the phone with my wife and a real estate broker, trying to divest myself of a piece of real estate. I was in a room, a huge room, it's like a big green room, by myself, on the phone. Vin, er, Vince, Rick came in, Rick. Arnie, Rick, Rick Flair, Okay. came in, Arn was with him, I don't know, there might have been somebody else with him, I can't remember. And I was on the phone, and Rick was fired up, sweating. And I, I didn't say excuse me or anything like that. I just, he just come in, you know. I didn't know what to think about it. I just, I was in the middle of a conversation. And then Rick started cutting a promo on me. He said, get up, you son of a bitch. Get up. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what was going on. He said, get up, you son of a bitch. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to dig out your eye. And my, now my wife's on the phone going, what in the hell is going on here? And I still didn't, none of it made sense to me. I had just been out drinking beer with Rick and Arn the week before, you know? Right. I didn't know I had any heat with anybody. And nothing had happened during the week that would have elicited that kind of behavior. So I, and I started to think, is this it's either a rib or maybe I'm in a segment I don't know I'm in. I was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. And, and Rick was so mad, he bit his own lip. And he was bleeding. I saw a trickle of blood coming down his chin. I thought, well, this is fucking insane. And I'm, just, I'm trying to now. I'm trying to get off the phone. And then Rick started firing shots at me. And as I'm sitting in the chair, I hadn't even stood up. He's going, get up, bam! He throws a punch. Get up, bam! He throws a punch. And he was hitting me, and they were kind of Rick. I love you too. But he was throwing punches at me, and they were connecting. But it wasn't like, bam, you know? Right. So now I'm now I'm that made me even more confused, and then I find so fuck the, I, I, I hung up the phone and I stood up and I said Rick I'm not going to fight you, what what the fuck, get out here and fight I kick your ass and Rick I am not going to fight you, and I had taken a couple steps back and I was up against the wall and there was a point there where it was like well not now man I'm not going to sit here and get killed but. I was, just, I was still trying to figure it out, and that's when I think it got loud, and people came in, and they pulled Rick off, and 
And he, you know, he went out, and I, and I was, I was just dumbfounded. And to this day, Rick and I have never really talked about it. We, I mean, obviously, we've hung out. We probably had more cocktails since then than we did in the years prior to that. But I, I don't know. Did he apologize for that? No. Um, the story that made the rounds was he was being interviewed by about his time in WCW and got so angry bringing up issues that, that he went looking for you. Did, you. did you ever hear that story? I didn't version? hear that story. Who won the fight? I mean, you guys had a backstage fight. Who really won? I'm, I got my money on my yeah. friend, Diamond. <laughs> He said some things that, you know, made me go to the stand and wait for him to get to the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> and when he got to the bottom of the stairs, I said, I'm a pussy, huh? Fuck you. And he went, fuck you. And I swear, when he put his head into me, we, when we landed, <laughs> we were at least 25 feet from the point of impact. But when we landed, I had him in a, in a, in a, in a, in a fragility. I got him in the front face lock. And, and I, I got him, I'm like, and, it's a, and I swear, there's a couple of super moments, and I told Scott, I'm going to tell it just like this. So I've seen some bullshit on the internet about blah, 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 you know, that, you know, and he's go, they got his ass whooped. Here's what really happened. What saved you when you fell was his fluffed up cosmetic muscles, Diamond, because we know you're cut ah, out of a ah. diamond. But sorry, continue. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. You know, <laughs> when we landed, I was so blown away that I had him. It was like a surreal moment. <laughs> so I got him, and I'm punching him with my left hand, letting it go with a hold like an idiot. And I'm hitting my, I'm hitting my hand right. into my head. I swear to God, like a rock. It's hurting my hand, hitting his head. And by that time, you know, the guys are, you know, they're trying to pull him off. Johnny Ace, there's like four guys. So as they pull Scotty off, it's like, you know, they separate us. They pull him off. He rears his head back. And again, a surreal moment where time slows down. And he goes, get the fuck off me! And the veins are popping. Yeah. And I would look at him, and again, I swear to God, I go, wow, he's scary. <laughs> yeah, he holds out on you. So I, I kick him as hard as I can, but now he's coming down. Oh, my God. Fire, three-time AAU champion, is coming down on me now. So I go into the fetal position to protect, right? Yeah. And he ain't getting on me because I know they're trying to pull him back off me now. And I'm just trying to protect myself. And I'm feeling something around my face. <laughs> and it feels hot. And I feel it again up around my eye. And then I feel it up and I realize, holy fuck, he's trying to rip my eye out. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> I'm like, another surreal moment. That will suck. I finally stood up to this like, son of a bitch, and now he's going to rip my eye out. So I fucking turned and bit him as hard as I could. Right as I'm doing that, they pull us apart, and when we come up, we're both coming up swinging and yelling. I have no idea. I look like Freddy Krueger just kind of holding my face. Jesus. Oh, my God. I have no idea. I have no idea because it didn't hurt. I, you know, I go to the fucking back. And as I'm walking in the locker room, they, they separate us and stuff. Yeah. And look, they separate us. And as I'm going to the back, I look in the mirror. I'm thinking, what? Is this coming? And all the boys are looking at me like, shocked. You know? And now I'm in the back, and Nash comes running up. And Nash is best friends with Steiner and me. And me and Nash are driving together. We're tag team champions. Yeah. And Nash goes up and goes, this is bullshit, man. We didn't sign up for this. We're out of here. I go, we're out of here? I go, I go we're not fucking out of here. Fuck that. I said, I ain't fucking going anywhere. The boys will pick up a pussy. He goes, if you're a pussy, he goes, you stood up to Steiner. They think you're a demigod. I go, <laughs> I go really? He goes, really? He goes, let's get the fuck out of here. So we walked over to Johnny Ace, and we said, Johnny, we're fucking out of here. He goes, yeah, you guys should go. Memories between the match with you, Scott, and uh, the Nasty Boys. Jerry said that uh, you guys worked a little bit stiff, or Scott worked stiff with him in the ring. The one where all the shit happened? Yeah. No, he, he's such a liar. No, he, uh, what happened, this is, this is the, the, the story of this whole thing, which show his ignorance. Um, Jerry had a bad neck, and it was known to Scott and I, and to Nobbs, and to Jerry, of course, who had the bad neck, and Jerry had talked to J.J., and J.J. said, just go work the match. And I heard J.J. say that to him. I was right there in the room. So we worked the match. And it's, uh, 
Scott um, threw a chair at Jerry, and Jerry didn't see it. And it was a, like a, a bowling chair, not a folding chair, but like a plastic Brunswick chair. And he threw it, and Jerry didn't see it through the lights, and it came and hit him. It gave him like a stinger. He skid, scooted in. You know, Scott thought he was going to feed him the comeback. And uh, Sags went in and just beat him up, potatoed him. By the time Scott knew what happened, he was, he was you know, bleeding. Because, you know, those guys, us working stiff, Jesus. Those <laughs> guys, yeah, those guys, I mean, they couldn't work light if they wanted to. So, um, but anyway, they ended up suing us out of this whole thing. And instead of just, as soon as he got hit with that chair, he would have crumbled and said, hey, you know, like, the worst thing you can do is go after the boys. Right. You know, he wasn't smart enough to realize he had a company. Yeah. You know, and I think he ended up getting, like, you know, he, he got fired or got let go or whatever it was, probably from a three or $400,000 a year spot, got nothing in settlement, maybe a hundred or 200 grand. Right, right. You know, just a really poor business, and then and, and went after us. <laughs> you know, went after me and Scott. And we were, you know, I, I always considered him a friend up until then. I don't dislike the guy. I just think he made some really, you know, had some, made some bad choices in his life. You have the nasty boys, and they <laughs> used to do this cartoon hardcore wrestling in WCW. Mm -hmm. And he comes in the locker room, and he's giving this speech, and. He's telling the boys, you know, all of this stuff about, uh, you know, it brings a tear to his eye to see people out there trying, this, that, and the other. And then, all of a sudden, he starts shitting on the boys. Now, these are younger guys, that, you know, in the business, so, of course, they're going to respect them and, and not say nothing back to them about mm -hmm. nothing. Well... My girl had just texted me, and I looked at my text. And uh, whatever it was she had said to me, I started laughing. And Brian North looked at me and said, fuck you laughing at New Jack. You can't wrestle. You ain't never wrestled a day in your life. Mm. And that's the last thing he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> and... When his big head got up off the floor, I was still on him. Oh man, that was that was a long time ago. Um, we were in a we were in a club, and this girl that was in this club, we'd all gone there after the matches, and there was a girl in the club who had been a a girlfriend of one of our friends who wasn't there, and and she had been in there, and uh, she'd went with me and some other guy, and we were sitting at this bar, and we were having drinks. And, and the boys come up and they're all joking around, hey, how you doing, and everything, and they reached around and grabbed her tit. And I looked, and I kind of laughed, you know, you don't go against the boys, and I just kind of laughed. And uh, the guy sitting next to her kind of laughed, and, and she was there waiting for her boyfriend to come in, which was Trent Knight. Right. And uh, so we were all sitting there, just having drinks, and uh, next thing you know, he grabbed her again. And it occurred, I'm not getting, you know, I don't want to get involved in this, because I'm, I'm new in this, and I don't want to get involved. And so kind of joke again, and, and the guy next to me, Next to the, this girl started to get, you know, because he's the one that was watching out, he kind of started getting mad. Right. And, of course, I'm sitting there. Now they're making me look bad because I'm sitting there with them. And he's doing this with me there in front of me, making me look like, well, what are you going to do? Right. And it was like, and I, so I finally said, hey, you know, enough's enough. I mean, you know, you, you've had your fun. Let's stop this, all right? Well, the blonde-haired one grabbed me in the face and pushed me. And I went off, and as I went off, this big bouncer there grabbed me, bear hugged me, and took me in the bathroom. And I was a big dude, then. this guy was big. And he bear hugged me, and he put me in the bathroom, and he was can, 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 can. And I was livid, I was, you know, pissed. Uh, so he goes, man, just chill out, settle down, catch him later. So, anyways, they went back, somebody came back and said, hey, man, they're gone. I knew where they were staying at. So I went to their hotel. And as I went to the hotel, I went up the stairs, and I banged on their door. And uh, the black-haired one opened the door, and it had the, the lock on the door. I said, open the door. And he goes, said something, I can't even remember, get the fuck out of here or something like that. And I kicked the door, and bam, 
as I kicked the door in, he went to the side. And I, I, I came into the room, and, and the blonde-haired one was laying face down on the bed, passed out. And that's all I remember. Wow. And from what I understand, I got hit in the back of the head with one of those heavy phones, old-time phone things. All right. Knocked me down, and they put the boots to me, kicked the shit out of me. Have you ever seen them since, or? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I was really disappointed because I thought that they talked all this crap the whole time I was in the UFC about, oh, he kicked his ass, man, he kicked his ass, and face up, kicked his ass, and this and that. And so I, uh, I I was listening to this the whole time, and I never ran across him. And then when I got into WWF, I ran across him, and Billy Gunn was there with me, and he, <laughs> wow. he, was, he was telling me, calm down, okay, we were checking at this counter, and he walked right up next to me. And he says, hey, Billy, how you doing? And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, you better get, I swear to you, you better get the fuck away from me. Craziest things I've ever seen was the fight between you and Kali. Oh, my that God. That was insane. That was horrible. You know, when, when, Kali, when Kali came in, was there like a little giant heat between you guys? It wasn't, I don't think it was a giant heat. It wasn't that, uh, it was, I think for me, it was more the fact that I, th I just thought he didn't take what we did seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, and a lot of that was just because I think the language barrier and the communication barrier. You know, Paul, <laughs> Kali is really a really nice guy and a great guy. I think his personality, too. You mentioned Ron Reese just being kind of a laid-back guy. Yeah. I think from getting to know him, he's just really laid-back. Yeah, really yeah I think so. He's a, I think a lot of that was misunderstood, you know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, me, I'm really hard on myself for matches and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and I really want to go out there and and... and I take it really serious uh, on the spots everything we're doing. Everything you do, yeah. Everything, you know. I, I strive. Yeah, I could lay back and not do shit and still keep a job. Mm -hmm. But I go very hard to earn the respect of the guys I work with. They can trust me. I'm safe. Uh, I'm not going to blow spots. I'm going to catch them if they do a dive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be dependable to be there on false finishes. You know what I mean? That's, you know, I take that very seriously. And, uh and the whole Kali thing was just, uh, I just got frustrated with him, you know. We're in the ring with Taker, and you got one thing to do, and you can't even pay attention enough to do that. Mm -hmm. Boy, I got pissed off at it. And then we got in an argument, and, you know, and it was absolutely the worst friggin' fight on the planet. It was terrible. Well, for you, for me, it was like Godzilla versus freaking King Kong. Yeah, I was just talking to Kane about it. It was crazy. Yeah, you know, from my standpoint, I think it was... Uh, it was the worst fight I think I'd ever been in my life. It was terrible. I just remember somebody's ass sitting on my head in the locker room, and I'm laying there going, I'm just too old for this shit. What the hell am well, I you, guys, you guys were literally punching each other in the well, face. Well, we were trying to. It was the funny thing with him is, is, is he was, like, trying to hit uh, – um, one of those weeble wobble balls that won't that will weave but won't fall down. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. I've never seen anybody. Though. It's like he's like a pro boxer the way he's bobbing and weaving, and you know, it's because he could barely stand up straight. Yeah, it yeah. was just weird. I was barefoot, and there's a table between us, and bags around. It's like leave it to me to pick a fight barefoot in my friggin' underwear for Christ's sake. My my bare trunks. Just I picked a good time to pick a fight. Right. Well, then and then you guys fell down, and then he landed on top of you. So you said so you thought that you lost, but I thought it was a pretty well. It's not that. I just, it was a hockey fight. Loss. I think I, I think I felt that I lost. That he didn't go to the hospital, so therefore I felt like I lost. <laughs> you were you know, so mad. I was so I, mad. I, I was had gonna, to console you the whole way. Like, man, it was great. I, like, yeah, oh, my stupid. whole thing was I didn't put him in the hospital, so therefore I lost. You know, uh, what right? I mean? Yeah, exactly. I was so angry at the time that like, I wanted to put him in the hospital. That the, son of a bitch. The best line that we still laugh about. I laugh. Me and Kane were laughing the other day. Was you said to me? You said because he, he basically had done your chop. In front of you, yeah. and you went to me. You don't even know what you're doing. You're the shits. And his reply was, "You're the shits too, bro." Yeah, <laughs> his you're the shits too, brother. I know you are, but what am I? Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>